Hi, everyone. My name is John Kinney, and I'm with the National Sports Media Association. Today, I'm joined by the 2023 Philadelphia Co-Sports Writer of the Year, Olivia Reiner. Olivia, thanks for joining me today. Oh, of course. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Olivia, what does it mean to you to be named the 2023 Co-Sports Writer of the Year for Philadelphia? Um, it's very humbling, to be completely honest with you, uh, especially to share this award with Mike Jensen. He is such a talented journalist and, um, you know, a really great person. And I've been able to I've been at the Inquirer for a pretty short time and I've only had the opportunity to work with him for a short period of time before he retired. But um, to even be like mentioned in the same breath as him is really cool to me and also not just this year but looking back at past winners too to just see the list of names on, on there it's like again it's a little surreal to even be included in that list so uh, I'm very flattered and I'm really looking forward to the ceremony in a few weeks. Um, at the Enquirer you're the Eagles uh, beat reporter um, what does a day look like for you um, during the season as a Eagles beat reporter? Man, I think there's no one day that's totally identical to the next. I guess that's one of the pleasures and kind of the joys of being in this job is that all of our days look a little different depending on kind of what, uh, you know, as you mentioned, you're talking about the season specifically, but depending on whether or not we're in season, we're out of season, we're in training camp, we're during the regular season, postseason every day is a little bit different just depending on what you're working on. But during the week, it's, it's generally um, it's, a, it's actually a little bit more predictable in the NFL before I covered the Eagles. I covered the flyers for a couple of years here and the NHL schedule is a little bit more overwhelming than the NFL schedule. And it's a little less uh, standard from a day-to-day -day perspective. Um, sometimes they're playing games every other day. Sometimes there's back-to-back -back games in the NHL schedule, 82 games, half of those on the road. So it is a little bit more of a, a challenge from the logistics, logistics aspect. But looking at the NFL, it's, it's a little bit more predictable. Typically your game days are on Sundays and that can be, you know, it, it's, it's more of a longer work day. Um, getting to the stadium pretty early to do at the Enquirer, we do a pregame live show about 90 minutes before kickoff. And then, of course, you know, watching the game. Mm -hmm. If I'm on the game story, I'm filing uh, the game story at the buzzer and then going down to the locker room to talk to players, going to the press conference to speak to the head coach um, and then kind of updating the story. Or if I'm writing a sidebar it's you, I file, I file that after the game. Um, so just kind of depends what I'm working on, but then during the week, usually practices Mondays, usually a press conference day with the head coach Tuesdays, a day off. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday practices, locker room, um, generally writing a, at least, you know, one story a day. Um, so it's a fun, it's been a really fun grind, I guess you could say. And, um, uh, I've enjoyed my experience so far covering the team. Um, how do you build your relationship with the players and coaches so you can um, get your stories out and um, get the breaking news that you need? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's I, now this is my third pro team that I've covered in a pretty short span since I, I graduated college. And, um, you know, I started my career covering the Packers there for a few years and then moving on to the Flyers and now the Eagles. And um, yeah, it's pretty much, it's part of the transition and part of the day to day is just building and maintaining relationships. Um, I think it's, uh, it's important to just show up a lot and be present. And um, I think that's the biggest Throughout my career, the biggest thing I've learned, is it's important to be there so players see you, they know that you're there, that they know, they see your face. Um, and also trying to not only go to players when you need something for them and, and try to talk to them and learn about who they are and, and try to have still, you know, obviously a professional relationship with them, um, but, but to have a little bit deeper of a, of a relationship beyond just the service level of like, I only talk to you when I need something. So um, kind of working on that aspect and that I found that that has helped in establishing trust 
um, in getting to know players on, on a deeper level and also in, in finding story ideas and things like that too. Um, generally, I feel like that can come from when the recorder is down. I think it's important to have those moments and those conversations with players. Coaches are a little bit different because we don't get like that kind of access to them. Um, usually it's just access at a podium, but I've, when it comes to the players, I have, I've felt found that like putting the recorder down often is, is a really important time too. Um, does it help, uh, with seeing the same reporters there? Um, does it help to like build that relationship with the same reporters that you see each and every day that cover the team, um, to build that relationship with your colleagues? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's definitely a lot of us in Philadelphia as, or as there was in green Bay covering an NFL team. There's a lot of attention on the NFL. Um, the Eagles are really big team in the city, obviously, probably arguably the biggest team, the NHL, it was different. It's just a smaller media core, not as many media people regularly following the team. But, um, I think, I think at the end of the day, like we are competitors, even if we work in different mediums, if, you know, I'm a, a, a newspaper writer, I work, write mm -hmm. for print and I write for digital and there are, you know, radio people that I deal with, there's broadcasters, um, everyone kind of has a different mm -hmm. expertise and, and medium, but it does make the job a lot more enjoyable. If you have good working relationships, um, with the people that you're with every single day, even if we don't necessarily work together. So, um, I think I'm, I've, I've been really lucky. I've worked with some really great people, at the inquire and then also not at the inquire and being a new person on the beat in Philadelphia, it's been very helpful to just like get to know the other reporters and learn from them. Um, whether it's just, you know, how they go about the job or the foundational knowledge that they have about the team that I'm covering. Um, I think it's important to try if, if they're willing to help and if they're willing to share a little bit of that knowledge and expertise, it's, it'd be, I'd be crazy not to take them up on that. So every news, every um, town city that I've gone to where, or every, I should say every locker room, um, every team, I've tried my best to try to like learn from the reporters that have been there and to try to get as much as I can from their expertise. Did you always know you wanted to get into sports journalism as a career? Yeah, you know, I think it became more clear to me when I got to college. I always loved sports. I grew up playing sports. I grew up honestly writing about sports too. Like um, I, when I was younger in elementary school, I really loved football. I loved playing football during recess. And like, I don't know, I didn't have, I was not big on, on video games and we didn't have iPads and iPhones and things like that. And my entertainment for myself when I was younger, I like to write and I like to write um, just like creative stories, not like sometimes about my life, sometimes not about my life, but I liked writing about like essentially whatever, including football and stories about playing sports and things like that. And it, to me, it was never, it was just fun. Um, and then when I got older and got into high school, I joined my student newspaper and Wrote, wrote about everything and eventually became editor-in-chief of my student newspaper. At the same time, I was also doing a lot of uh, vi video. I was taking digital media classes and really got into video as well, and then ultimately went to school for broadcast journalism at Northwestern. And my first year at Northwestern, I wanted to get involved in the student television station. I was picking between news and sports. I tried both news and sports and I just, I happened to enjoy sports a little bit more. And I enjoyed some of the people that I was working with a little bit more in sports too. And I stuck with that. And um, yeah, the more I did it, the more it became clear to me that this was a field that I wanted to be in as I you know continued to progress through college and into my professional career. So I feel like it has always been in me to love sports and to tell sport stories about sports and um, now I just get to make a career out of it, which is really cool. Did you have any uh, mentors that you uh, that helped you along the way or people that you looked up to when you were younger? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was a really big hockey fan when I was younger and I used to read. I actually like, you know, just kind of reading 
different people. I, I, as I mentioned, I went to school at Northwestern and around that time was when the Blackhawks were having a lot of success, winning a few Stanley cups in a really short period of time. So I used to read a lot of the Chicago area sports writers. And, um, I really loved Mark Lazarus at the Chicago sun times. He was someone who I read a lot, just like, obviously the subject matter is one thing, but I felt like he had a really distinct voice in his writing. And I think that's still something that I'm working on and striving to continue to develop as I uh, write more and more. Um, so definitely a lot of the Chicago area sports writers. And then um, now really like as I've gotten into my professional career, I'm really lucky to have worked with a lot of amazing journalists. I started my career at the Green Bay Press Gazette in Green Bay, Wisconsin, working with some like incredible veteran journalists. And I'm so fortunate, like, I don't know, your colleagues, you, you wanna think that your colleagues always have your back and always have your best interest in mind. That's not always the case, depending on where you go. But I really felt like when I started my career there, someone who's like so new to the industry, like they just took me right under their wings. And um, I'm very grateful to all of them for just being there for me and continuing to be there for me to this day. If I ever have questions or if I need anything, even though I don't work there anymore, um, they, they've always been very helpful to me. So I'm really I'm fortunate to have worked with some really awesome people throughout my career so far. Um, what advice would you give young journalists trying to pursue a career in journalism? Man, um, huh, there's I, there's so much. I think I'll echo something that I said earlier, and it's something that one of my colleagues, too, Jim Ozarski, always my former colleague in, in Green Bay. He's still at the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, and he covers the Bucks now. Um, something that when I I interviewed for that job, and he was in that interview, and something that he said to me that stuck out to him, to him about my interview was that like I would, the willingness to just show up and the willingness to be there. Um, it's really easy to do this job or like, you know, kind of a similar job from your couch. Essentially you can watch the games. You can listen to the press conferences now on the internet, which wasn't necessarily the case when I started my job. Um, but now that's like, that's a thing that all of these press conferences are live streamed and, anyone can access them. So you can like do this job without actually physically being there, which is I honestly, it's great um, mm -hmm. for people looking to get a foot in the door, just looking to kind of work on their writing chops or um, anything like that. I think it, it's good that the playing field has been leveled. But when you have the opportunity to show up and be there and try to find a unique angle or, or try to, I don't know, put your readers or, or the audience whoever you're trying to communicate to and to really put them there in a way that they can't get there from their living room sofa um, or from watching the press conference online. I think that's really important because that's what's going to separate you from someone else who's, you know, doing the job from home essentially. Mm -hmm. So I think continuing to show up, continue to prioritize your relationships, um, you know, even don't, I wouldn't necessarily get super fixated on like, I have to go cover a pro team right out of school, or I need to do this now. Find, you know, your local high school. I'm, I'm sure there's no team that wouldn't appreciate the coverage um, and, and try to become a, a beat reporter. If that's something that you're interested in, if you're interested in this path, I think you can get a lot of valuable beat experience covering high schools, covering colleges. Um, there, there's a lot of value to that too. I think that's how, that's how you're going to, prepare yourself for that next job, whatever that might look like. Um, Olivia, what are you looking forward to for this awards weekend coming up? Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. I can't wait to just meet everyone. I think it's going to be great networking, getting to meet other journalists, um, especially journalists that like, I don't work with regularly journalists who I don't, um, who don't cover the NFL. I've gotten to know some of them through a bunch of league wide events. And of course, I feel like in the NFL, like the, there's so few games and I cover a team that is pretty prominent in the Eagles. So I, you do see like a lot of people coming into Philly from other places to cover the, to, to cover the game. Whereas the, the NHL, it's different. It's, it's really like you see the local beats whenever you go to a game and you, you see the visiting teams, beat writers and things like that, but you don't really see a ton of national people coming in. So I'm excited to just spread the net even wider wider, and meet some new faces, 
people that I've admired for a long time. And then of course, people that I haven't met yet. So I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to the weekend. I think it's going to be a great time. Uh, thanks, Olivia, for taking the time to speak with me. And again, congratulations on your 2023 National Sports Media Award. Oh, thank you so much, John. I, I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Thank you.